This series is dedicated to the creations I've built as a space engineer. In this debut episode, we shine the spotlight on my re-entry rocket, which is capable of both reaching escape velocity and safely returning you to the surface. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers. This is going to be my first episode of doing a sort of a spotlight series for the creations that I've made over uh, the years of playing Space Engineers. <laughs> uh, in this video, what we're going to be showing you is this monster right here. So this is my re-entry rocket. Now I want to make a special shout out and a special thank you to Scott the Tank Player who specifically requested that I post this ship to the workshop. There has been quite a few requests in the past for me to actually post my stuff to the workshop. I keep forgetting to do it. Um, so I've made this series as a way of hopefully addressing that problem. Um, what I'm going to do is a quick little spotlight video on the creation. It, and it will be, uh, there will be a link for it in the description. It'll be posting this into the Steam Workshop uh, when you're watching this. So if you do want to try it out for yourself, tweak it, modify it, do whatever you want to it, go right ahead. Um, if you want to, you know, submit it back to the workshop and let me know about it for me to check out your modifications or just post, you know, your thoughts in the comments about how I can improve this, make it better. I uh, just, that would all be awesome. So that's kind of the point of this is I'm going to show off something that I've built um, and how it works. And if you guys have some amazing ideas about how to make it even better, that I would love to hear them so that I can make those changes. So all we have going on here is this is just a, the default Earth base. Uh, so I just started on that for the hell of it. And I added on this little platform onto the end here uh, to kind of show maybe how you would use this as well, right? So you'd be on a planet. And this the whole idea of this rocket is it's supposed to allow you to get into space from a planet um, as well as fly you around in space, uh, hence the ion thrusters. But its purpose isn't really interstellar, right? It isn't for moving you between planets and all that kind of stuff. There's no jump drive on it. It's very bare bones. It should be something that's fairly easy to build early game. Um, <clears throat> minus, of course, maybe some of the thrust, like the ion thrusters and things, because I believe they're actually kind of hard to find on planets, right? Some of the components. But you can still, you still can find all of this stuff on planets. But there isn't a whole lot to it, right? Like mostly steel blocks. We got a hydrogen, like one large hydrogen thruster down here on the bottom. Uh, there is also, you'll notice, um, guns. These are purely optional, but these guns on the feet here uh, were built originally because I took this to the alien planet in one of my episodes of the Nid Whitelist series. And these, oh boy, did these help. Like when we landed this, our crew landed this down on the alien planet and those guns came in super handy. They took out all the bugs. Uh, we didn't even have to do anything. So uh, one downside obviously is you have to load them up manually and there is no reloading with them. Again, this is a very simple build, something that you should hopefully be able to build early game. <clears throat> now I could be completely wrong on that. Let me know if you, if you think so. Um, anyhow, so yeah, so we just got some basic landing gear, one large hydrogen thruster for lift. And then we've got uh, ion thrusters in all directions for when we do get into space so that we can move in all directions. And you also notice tucked away here, there is some hydrogen thrusters tucked away on the sides here as well. So that when we're flying up into, uh, into orbit, we can adjust uh, with these thrusters. As well as, now this is overkill. Again, I said it was early build, but I did build this uh, later on in the game when I had a lot of resources or I had a lot of forces resources available to me. Uh, so there are four, I believe, yeah, four gyros on here. You don't need four gyros. You, one is fine. I added four because I thought it looked better, right? It made it more symmetrical, looked a little better. Um, the power, I believe four of these is actually kind of needed to make sure that you can move around and not overpower the ship. You might not need four, but you definitely need more than one uh, for all of these thrusters and stuff, especially when you're coming down for a landing and slowing yourself down. And then there is a hydrogen tank. There's actually two hydrogen tanks in the center here. There's one down there and there's one right here so that you can carry tons of fuel with you uh, to make sure you can get into orbit and land back down without having to refuel because uh, you might be using this as your first vehicle to get up into space, right? Uh, to build your space platform and you might not have access to a lot of hydrogen fuel. So I wanted it to be able to carry enough for you to get into space and come back down 
if you needed to. Now, two again might be overkill, but I wanted to be safe. Uh, there is a connector here for, you know, maybe when you get into space, you can use this for connecting to your sta station, as well as you could even use it on the platform down here, which would make a lot of sense. Like, I didn't take a whole lot of time to build this little platform here, but I think it would make a lot of sense to, on your base on the planet, have just kind of like what I've done here uh, for the walking platform, uh, maybe also have underneath here connect uh, a connector and things so that you can actually and then run tubes into your base so that you can actually refill because you're gonna have to obviously fill the tanks up with hydrogen so that would be how you would get that in uh, and then at the very top you'll see that there is a cargo container now the reason for this is because again this is your first ship or at least this is my idea of this ship it would be a ship that would take you into orbit for the first time and you want to be able to carry with you all of the resources that you need to build your your first platform in space that you would then connect this to uh, and then have like a permanent presence in space that then you could build more stuff up in space and then, you know, go off to other planets or come back down or whatever. Uh, so that was what the cargo container was for. And then on top is your command center. Uh, three seats. Now, there's a reason why the seats are oriented this way. It's on purpose. And it's actually the only reason for it is because of a bug in the game. So ultimately, you shouldn't have to do this. What I originally had was this seat actually in the same orientation of these two seats here. Whoops, facing, uh, facing that way. And when you get into the seat, there's actually on the ship, there is also a remote control block hiding away somewhere right there. So there is a remote control block on this ship as well. And it's orientated like the, the center seat is here. Now, the original idea was that you could get into this seat that would be facing like this way, right? And then you would jump into the remote control block that's facing like that seat is facing. And then you could control the ship uh, for launch. And then you could just disconnect from the remote control block. And you're facing now the right way for flying through space. Now, the downside to this configuration is you'll have to literally get out of your seat and move to another one to change your orientation for flight. Now, this is a workaround for a bug. So what you'll see is if I get into, say, this seat here, right, and we look at the orientation, right, we are facing what we would be facing for flying through space, right? That would be a much better orientation for flying through space. But if we wanted to say, go into the remote control block now, this is a much better orientation for uh, flying. Uh, but here you can see the problem already. Uh, so this is now facing the right way for flying or for landing and taking off. But there's a bug that I can't actually use the alt key to move the camera around. Um, so like if you see like if I jump back into this seat, it should be in this orientation, but it starts you off like underneath it looking up and I can't do this. What I'm doing right now, I can't do that when I'm using a remote control block for some reason. You used to be able to, but you can no longer do that, at least at the time of uh, this version of the game, which I'll bring up on the screen right now. There you go. Bottom right hand corner, that's the build number, the version number that I'm using currently. Hopefully they fix this in the future. Uh, so anyhow, so for right now, I have a seat that faces this way which gives you the proper orientation for using your, uh, so that it's easy to fly your ship, right? Um, up, down, left, right, all that kind of jazz and moving your gyros around. So that's what this seat is for. And then once you're into space, you would jump into this seat and you could fly in an orientation that makes way more sense uh, for flying through space like this. Anyhow, so that's kind of how those are set up. So why don't we just take it for a quick spin and see how she works. So if you were playing this in creative, I am in survival, by the way, but if you were playing this in creative, you would, you you know, you hook it up, fuel it up, get everything going, you know, you're walking on up, and away, you're getting ready for your first launch into space, you're all excited, and then you come on up to here, and let's head over. This is a fun little bug, too. It doesn't move you with the block. You're going to fall off if you stand still, but anyhow. <laughs> so here we go, into the ship. Turn on the power to the engines, disconnect the landing gear, and soar to the stars. Oh, okay, that was a little close. <laughs> but anyhow, you get the you get the picture, so I guess that was a bit close um, to the platform. Wouldn't be an Anubis video if there wasn't a bit of a an oops a daisy. So this this will get you into space. Uh, there's more than enough thrust for this. I actually did test this live in a creative build in one of the episodes of the Nid Whitelist. Um, Minty and I flew this into space, and it worked really well, actually.
as you can see, we made it into space. I turned on the or turned off the hydrogen thrusters to stop us uh, from going forward. Well, not stop us from going forward because we're in space. We just kept going forward. Turned on the ion thrusters and it stopped us dead in our in our, in our spot. Okay, so I cheated a little bit with the magic of editing and creative mode, and I pasted back down a new version of the ship so it doesn't have all of the pieces broken off. Uh, so you can actually see it in its full glory here in space. So now what you would do is you jump into one of these seats, right? And you can now control it like it is flying in space this way, right? So you'd fly around, find the spot that you wanted to, to go to, you know, stop there, build your base, get everything set up, and then, uh, then you can head back down to the planet. And it works quite well as just a, a nice little spaceship as well. It's got kind of like all the basics of what you need to get going. Now it does, now you are missing, obviously, there is no um, oxygen that you bring with you as far as like a sealed room. You'll, you'll notice that this is wide open. I used to have a door here, uh, but it made it really difficult to move around inside, so I just got rid of it. Uh, so this is definitely not, um, you know, long-term space ready. This is literally just get up here, build yourself a base, uh, get yourself set up, bring everything with you in here that you need, right? So in here, you should bring with you... Um, you know, like oxygen bottles and hydrogen bottles and all that kind of stuff with you so that you could keep going while you build your base and get your oxygen in space set up, you know, using the oxygen generators and all that kind of jazz, right? But this gets you up into space. And then when you're ready to go back down, you jump back in to this seat here. You turn on your ion thrusters, right, and head back down towards the planet. Uh, and then once one of the nice things about planets, though, too, right, is, is you can use these ion thrusters to get yourself to the point where you are um, in the gravity of the planet, and then you can actually just, you know, turn everything off and let yourself just drop like a rock down to the planet. Uh, and then when you get close enough, you calculate how, how much uh, stopping distance you need. But when you get close enough, just turn on that massive hydrogen uh, thruster and it'll slow you right down. All right, so I am in the gravitational pull of the planet now, only 0 0.06. Uh, if I was to turn off these thrusters, as you can see, my speed is still increasing. You'll notice over there on the right-hand side, right? So now I can just let this drop down to the planet and it's gonna slowly pick up speed until I hit terminal velocity. I won't use any fuel um, and away, you know, just drop on down. And when we get, when we feel like we need to slow down, all we have to do is turn on our engines. As you can see, I just did that there. And like we stopped pretty quick there, right? And as we get closer and closer to the planet, it's kind of like flip them on. Slow yourself down a bit, turn them off. And then you could actually maneuver yourself into place, right? And land yourself back down on the planet. I didn't quite line that up right, but you get the point. <laughs> Lock this, turn off the engines. And here we are back at home with our busted up platform that we broke on our way out. <laughs> but yeah, so we made it back home. And it works quite well, I think, actually, and it's reusable, which is a real plus to me. Uh, you don't, like, you don't throw anything away, it works for you uh, back and forth. And now that you're back down on the planet, you could then reconnect. So, I hope you guys like this. Uh, again, it'll be available, it's, it's available in the workshop right now. Uh, there's a link in the description. If you have any thoughts or suggestions as to how I can make this even better, uh, remembering that I am trying to keep this as uh, simple as possible for early game. Or if you make any modifications and you want me to check out the blueprints on the workshop, let me know. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like. You'll be letting me know that you're excited for more videos like this in the future. And you'll be helping to expose that video to more amazing people like you. If you're new to my channel, you might be interested in subscribing as you'll be notified when I release new videos. At the moment, I'm releasing Space Engineer videos on Monday and Thursday, Elite Dangerous on Wednesday, Pulsar of the Lost Colony on Saturday, and some other really fun stuff sprinkled throughout the week. There's a link to my full schedule in the description if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Have an absolute great one, and I'll see you next time.